Okay. Hi everyone, it's me, Veronica. Today, we are going to cover thyroid and the ketogenic diet. If you are suffering from the sluggish thyroid and or if you're on medication, but you're not sure if you can be on ketogenic diet because out there many information, um, ketogenic diet actually slows your thyroid. So today we are going to cover about all about the thyroid and even you want to be on ketogenic diet, I will give you the solution how to improve your thyroid and then you can get the maximum result on ketogenic diet. So I'm going to share screen with you. Just one second here. Okay, share screen. All right, this one. Okay, now we're going to talk about the functions of a thyroid metabolic hormone. Because why we call the, even though I read all those uh, medical physiology book and other place that uh, they don't say just the thyroid hormone. They mention this one thyroid metabolic hormone. Because the reason why your thyroid is a direct responsible for your metabolism. It's a huge, so that's like almost a master gland, this one. So um, if you have a hard time to lose weight or you gain weight so fast and then you don't know what's going on, maybe you want to check your thyroid. So let's say uh, the function of thyroid, here you can see the picture, this one, thyroid gland. It located in front of your neck is Adam's apple right there and it looks like a butterfly. And it's like it weights about 15 to 20 grams in an adult. And trust me, the thyroid gland is the largest of the endocrine glands. It's the biggest one. And it secretes two major hormones we call the T4 and T3. So what does it mean in T4 and T3? T means a thyroid and the 4 means a 4 iodine molecule. And three means three iodine molecule. So now you can see uh, thyroid, it runs on the iodine and also selenium. And usually T4 is in active form and the stronger one is a T3 because T3 is active form. So usually it's this thyroid increases the metabolic rate for your body and also regulates your body temperature and there also calcium balance for your body. So it is important. So if you don't take care of this thyroid gland and in the future, you may have a chance to get the osteoporosis because it's very important for your calcium balance and for your bone density. And usually uh, we divide it to if your thyroid is not balanced, either you are too high and too low, that's we divide the hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Usually, hypothyroidism is the lack of thyroid secretion causes the metabolism to fall 40 to 50% below the normal. So usually, when you have a hypothyroidism, the symptoms is like uh, you weight gain, you, you gain weight, and it's very, very hard to lose weight. And most of the time, you have no energy. It's like very tired. So you have the symptom, and then you experience your thinning hair and hair loss and also dry skin. Those are major symptoms. Also constipation is a big thing. And hyperthyroid is the opposite. It's an like extreme excess of a thyroid secretion. So it increases of the metabolic rate to 60 to 100% above the normal. So you're having too much thyroid. So when you have too much thyroid hormone, what happened? Usually, this is symptoms as um, you lose weight. It's because some people really lose like access of lots of weight, and then muscle weakness as well, and also often your diarrhea is the opposite, and extremely tired, but you can't sleep. That's the symptom too, and also another one is like. Um, you cannot bear, like if it's a little bit hot or you have the near the heat, is you sweat a lot and that's also a symptom. 
And also you can see from the someone whose face is if a hypo, hypothyroidism is like they have a bug eyes, it's like the eye, eyeballs is out. And that's the major symptom. And also another thing here, I wanted to tell you this. Also, thyroid hormone secretes uh, calcitonin. At the end here, calcitonin. This is uh, this hormone involves in the calcium metabolism. So it is important. But today we're gonna focus on T3 and T4. And then you're gonna ask, uh, okay, then how our body actually affect and produce the thyroid hormone? It's very simple. In your brain, you have the hypothalamus. This is going to be actually a signal to your here, pituitary gland, to make a TSH. What is the TSH? It stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. It's gonna actually um, make this hormone to bring into the uh, thyroid gland. So then from there, thyroid gland is making T3 and T4 in your blood. And another thing, also your thyroid gland produces T4 and T3. Uh, this one, it's also based on the amount of TSH received. So then you want to know like uh, um, what makes lower thyroid especially, right? So number one, it's high in stress. It chronically, you continuously, you're getting stress and you produce stress hormone from the adrenal gland that's gonna lower your thyroid hormone. And also estrogen. If you produce too much estrogen and if you are estrogen dominance, and especially people going through also menopausal, and they tend to actually lower their thyroid function. So two things that really measure to lower your thyroid. And also another one, liver toxicity. If you don't have a good liver, if you ever watch my webinar before about liver detox, you're gonna understand about the liver functions. One of the liver functions is uh, liver, in the liver, it converts T4 to T3. So if you don't have a good liver, you don't have a good conversion. That means it's going to lower your thyroid. So you make sure you pamper your liver as well. And another one, too much medication, vaccination, it's also lower thyroid. And also alcohol, of course. And I always tell people have a good water, good water, because the reason why the fluoride and the chloride, those are also lower thyroid as well. So make sure you have like a filtered water and the good water and also GMO, genetically modified. This one is like, you have to say no to GMO because the GMO 100% lower your thyroid. And another one, gluten food. Because the gluten, it causes the autoimmune responses. So if you wanna actually protect your gut or you have a leaky gut, you make sure you don't have a gluten food because it's right away, it's gonna lower your thyroid hormone. So those things are the lower your thyroid. So then um, you're going to say, oh, I went to see doctor, but my doctor say my thyroid is fine. But then I don't know why I got all kinds of this symptom. Well, here's the thing. Doctor going to go test either blood test and do it. And then if uh, in the blood test, it doesn't show anything. And for them, it's fine. But uh, thyroid function and your thyroid hormone is the best way to measure is like you have to also go by symptom. So when you go the symptom, if you have like underactive, it's a hypothyroidism, you make sure that you do the right thing in the natural way. So you balance your thyroid hormone and you're gonna see your weight comes out just like it's a byproduct. So uh, I put here a little bit of a self-assessment of hypothyroidism with the underactive. So let's go through the check backs. So here, sensitive to cold, if it's a little bit like cold weather or at night, if you don't cover the blanket, your hands and feet are really cold, that's also a sign. And do you notice under your chin and underarm skin become thin and loose? 
especially your under armpit and you have like those tricep skin is like look like kimono arms that's just a sign of hypothyroidism and do you have a dry skin and do you have a constipation and do you have an experience of difficulty weight loss and very fast you weight gain but usually when you gain weight people who has the hypothyroidism they gain weight all over the body and does your hair become thinner or experience hair loss and do you feel tired the most of time and you really have a, no energy that's just a big sign and do you have a joint pain and do you have a depression or you forget most of time you don't have amnesia but you forget things and do you have a puffy face those are the signs of the hypothyroidism when you look at this check box if you more than 50 percent up and even though your doctor say your thyroid is fine, you may want to check this one and start work on to support your thyroid. So now is the question is that, is the ketogenic diet bad for thyroid? So there's all over the internet, there's all of the information. It's like, okay, ketogenic diet going to lower the thyroid function. You know what? It is true in the beginning. So, um, for me, what is the best way to suggest to you? If you're not sure, you're not on medication, and but you have that kind of symptom of a hypothyroidism, I would ask you to go really check up the first number one, one more time check, not only one time check, at least divide four different hours, different day, you have the uh, check your thyroid. And number two, also get test for celiac disease for your gut and also get a test for heavy metal toxicity because those are actually involved with your thyroid function and also get a test for your vitamin D level on a ketogenic diet you want to make sure everything is right on the spot so you support your thyroid and then you can actually do the ketogenic diet so best way this is what I practice with my client even myself and if you have hypothyroidism I don't suggest you to do like a really standard ketogenic diet which is like really under 20 30 grams of carbohydrate and then you really high in fat and protein I whether you start like uh, based on the standard ketogenic diet but let's say every two to three days I want you to do carb cycling so give you a body at the good carbohydrate it can be over actually even 50 grams and then you're gonna say oh then I'm not gonna be in ketosis number, number one priority is like you want to actually get go on easy way to get into ketosis so same time you protect your thyroid and then you're slowly getting into ketosis so best way either do 48 72 hours carb cycling or you can do targeted ketogenic diet which is usually you have your carbohydrate before or during or after your workout you give your carbs and make sure that you reduce a little bit of fat intake when you do carbohydrate cycling so that's actually solution and overall um, you're gonna see actually even though you have a hypothyroidism or you are okay but you have like slow metabolism and then you go on the ketogenic diet in the end long run uh, you're gonna have a benefit effort and then you're gonna lose weight and then you're gonna maintain in the future you may gonna actually offer from the medication that's what I'm gonna see so how here's the thing I'm gonna show you if you do this one in your ketogenic diet you're gonna be all cover it's so the first not only just getting onto ketogenic diet and oh your yeah, high fat is good so I'm gonna have all kinds of high fat and then you know protein but I'm just gonna reduce the carbohydrate it's not going to work if your thyroid is not working properly you have to select the right food even though your macro portion is respecting the uh, uh, ketogenic diet you have to choose the right food the, for example 
Food that help to support the thyroid function. Number one, I told you thyroid, it runs on the iodine and selenium. So you have to eat the rich in iodine. It's those uh, iodine rich in food. It's a sea kelp, sea vegetable. Sea vegetable is everywhere. You can see from nori, if you go to Japanese restaurant, those nori, you can uh, see also dolls. You can see also wakame, all those things, sea vegetable. And also you consume the fish. Anything is like a salmon or tuna or other, the halibut. And also shellfish and eggs. Eggs are very high in iodine. So uh, you can also eggs is good for you to have fat and protein together. It's a perfect breakfast. You can have it. Also sea salt is all those mineral is very important for your thyroid function. And another one, I would say this one, the maca. I always put the maca in my smoothie. Is only the reason why I do that is uh, really mainly helps to balance the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. So those are actually producing their TSH before I explain to you. So maca is very important, the one of the super food for thyroid. And also another one, yerba mate. And also another thing, uh, the cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper stimulate your thyroid gland. So I start to add like cayenne pepper in your water, add cayenne pepper in your uh, cooking your vegetable or your protein. So have it every day as a spices. And very important, add the fermented food in your meal because fermented food is gonna protect your gut health. It gut health right away. It's um, um, work with your metabolism and it's gonna pamper your uh, thyroid hormone. So there's many fermented food. There's a pickles, there's a sauerkraut, and there is a kimchi, and there is a miso, and there is also like anything like a fermented artichoke, the asparagus, and just add in your meal. And if you can make a fermented, a fermented food at home, even better. And those are the main food that you want to put every single day. And let's see, it's the opposite one. What kind of food that actually can interfere the thyroid function? This is really you have to listen carefully what I say right now. It's especially uh, rich in goitrogen because the goitrogen and that's lower your thyroid function. But the problem is the rich in goitrogen is mostly it's raw cruciferous vegetables. And you know the Christopher vegetable is good for your liver and high in phytonutrients. You don't want to ignore that. So all those like broccoli, cabbages, turnips, cauliflowers, and kales, and mustard, and the Brussels sprout, all those things, instead of cut them all out at the same time, maybe you want to cook them. Because once you cook, you can kill the goitrogen. So then you can still get those phytonutrients in your body. So uh, have those in the cook uh, Christopher vegetable and also um, please avoid the soy product, especially soy um, whey protein or soy product, those protein isolate is really bad for your thyroid function. So instead of having that, if you enjoy to have a protein powder, you should have like choose made in chia or made in a uh, hemp seed. And those are the actually uh, best deal for you. And also important to avoid the millet and peanuts, radish. I know radish is really good for you too. It's good for your liver too. So when you have radish, try to ferment the radish or uh, have them cook and you know steam them and so have them. That's a better deal. And also strawberry. Yes, I know. Uh, especially blackberry, uh, blueberry. Especially blueberry. Blueberry and raspberry is um, high in polyphenol. So this is gonna reduce your inflammation in your gut and actually it's uh, good for you for your thyroid function but not the strawberries. So you want to eliminate the strawberry and peaches as well. And of course, I mentioned to you the GMO food and the gluten food, avoid that. Actually, ketogenic diet is going to help you because when you do ketogenic diet, most of the recipe is gluten-free anyway, and it's in low carbs. And then even though you uh, pick to choose the carbs, you're going to choose wisely. So then you can stay on the um, 
ketogenic diet, even though you have hypothyroidism, and then you can get benefit from it. And let's continue go for another one. Okay, then sometimes, what about activity? More activity affect your thyroid? Oh yes, definitely. I'm going through right next um, pages, so just uh, bear with me. Okay, now we cover about food. Now we cover about what's not uh, avoid the food, and now we're gonna talk about supplements, nutritional supplement. I'm talking about vitamins and minerals. So those supplement that help to support the thyroid functions. Um, zinc, yes. Think this way. The first, before you go grab and buy those supplement, why don't you take everything? as much as you can from the natural food source. Because the reason why, when you take all those vitamins and minerals from your food, you have no side effect mostly. But sometimes um, when you take from directly from the supplement, uh, you can have side effect. But here, what I wrote, this is actually gonna help you to uh, thyroid function, the zinc. First take from the uh, black pepper. Black pepper is very high in zinc. So add in every year meal the black pepper. And then you see, and the omega-3, fish. You have a fish, so you have, a, what is a high in omega-3? Yes, avocado, you're gonna have some like awareness. And all those high in omega-3, you take it, and then if you need extra, then you can go grab like a krill oil. So take about like a thousand to up to 2,000 per day. And then vitamin D. This is the only one thing that you can get, you cannot get from the food. So this is from the, you know, it's like if you live in the really sunny, uh, very hot weather, you know, that area, you're lucky. But if you live area that like uh, most of time is uh, rainy and then there's no sun, you have to take a vitamin D as a supplement. So like I say, go see your doctor and ask your doctor, what is my dosage for vitamin D? How much do I need? And according to the test, you can actually uh, take your vitamin D dosage. So usually people take uh, uh, 2,000 up to 10,000 IU, depends on how much you need it, but best way to, you have to test, and then you take the right dosage. And if you have a sunny day, you don't need a vitamin D supplement. And vitamin C and vitamin A and vitamin B3. Vitamin B3, as I call it, niacin. It's very important to actually um, break down your carbohydrate and then it helps you also your mood as well. So sometimes I suggest to people who are on Pozac or they tend to get depressed really often, I suggest them to take a vitamin D3 as well. And this is also support your thyroid function. And another one, most important, adrenal support. If you pamper your adrenal gland, and then you have the right amount of a stress uh, cortisol hormones in your body, you automatically supporting your thyroid function. But if you have a high cortisol in your body, right away you're gonna reduce, like uh, bring down your thyroid. So you make sure that you support your adrenal, which is there is also really good. Uh, product out there there's also good like essential oil as well so you can take the adrenal support i then extract this one i don't suggest to my client in the beginning because the reason why food and usually when you take it from the food and rich in iodine you don't have a side effect but sometimes you need extra then you can go for like a sea kelp as a supplement or you can go for like a iodine extract. Usually when you go to iodine extract, get the good one and high quality one and usually it goes to dosage like a 12.5 milligrams per day. So you can do that. And another one, trace the mineral. Why I say the trace the mineral, the reason why, even though you consume let's say tons of vegetable and the good fiber in it and you, you think you cover all those uh, vitamins and mineral but the problem is if the soil is depleted and then if the vegetable and all this food is from the soil you're not getting enough um, minerals so 
sometimes I tell them if you cannot get the, all the organic, you cannot get the really good like quality food, and maybe you want to support with the trace mineral to add you know your mineral uh, daily, and also chlorophyll. Because chlorophyll remove the heavy metals. Rich in chlorophyll is the chlorella, and then you can have a spirulina. And also, you can do like a natural way, like you can do like a parsley and the cilantro. When you combine together, it, it can actually also help to remove the heavy metals. So you can use that too. And probiotic. I always tell everyone, get the probiotic every single day, over 50 billions and protect your guts. And it's going to right away support your thyroid function. And also prebiotic. Many people say, what is prebiotic? Prebiotic, our body, it makes itself. But then again, if your body is already is not balanced, you may not going to have enough prebiotic. So you want to get the extra, the superfood prebiotic, usually like a baobab, they have like a high prebiotic, so you can add that. And those are the uh, nutritional supplement. And then what else you can do? lifestyle that helps to support the thyroid function. Number one, I told you, you have to pamper your adrenal glands so you can manage your stress hormone. So avoid the stress. This is really, I, I can't just say because I get stressed too. Everybody gets stressed. But I always tell you how to dance with that stress. So if you can do meditation, not once in a week or once uh, in a month, you know, like do like every single day. If you can practice meditation, it's going to really help to support the thyroid function and exercise because the exercise number one thing that actually reduce your stress hormone and therefore also it's support your thyroid function. So any exercise, do you like a swim? Do you like uh, go hike? Do you like to play tennis? Do you like to do crossfit? Do you like to do just weight training? Whatever makes you really feel good and then doing activity like because you like it and make you feel good, if you can do regularly, that's the right exercise for you and I want you to do regularly. Not once in a while, you know, oh, I gotta go, you know, train, no. So exercise is important and the hot yoga or hot sauna. So by doing so, you're going to actually eliminate all those toxins and through your skin. So it is a good idea to go to either hot yoga or hot sauna at least once a week. And I don't know if I want to say twice a week for hot sauna, but if you can afford it, you go for the twice a week the hot sauna as well. So those are the lifestyle that helps to support the thyroid function. This is it. So I cover all those thyroid and the ketogenic diet, just to remember this one. And number one is important is that you have to, if you have problem with the thyroid, you have to make that balanced first. But you can do it while on a ketogenic diet if you do the right thing. Like I said, all those uh, lists of food and doing the right activity and then gradually you getting into and you know in the end your body doesn't need much even thyroid hormone to actually um, bring the metabolic rate. So even though you have hypothyroidism to go on the ketogenic diet is not a bad idea. Actually, it's a good idea because you're gonna eliminate all this carbohydrate and sugar, and therefore it's gonna help your liver function, it's gonna help either your hormone and estrogen and uh, stress hormone. So actually overall, um, if you suffer from sluggish thyroid and you should look up the ketogenic diet, but not just the straight the standard ketogenic diet. You just kind of, you know, the giving the carb cycling in between. So when you do that, you're gonna have a maximum result on a ketogenic diet. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, webinar because the beginning I have a little bit like a bump on the road because some people told me that they can't even uh, see the screen. Um, I don't know. The, probably is the internet connection, but I try to make sure next week I don't have a, this problem. So next week, I'm going to talk about PCOS. Some people are gonna say, what is PCOS? Because this is really belong in female.
male, they don't have this problem. But why I want to talk about PCOS, this is a major problem out there. Many female, they are in this condition, but they don't even know they are in PCOS. And sometimes when you go see doctor, doctor, they don't diagnose this one because this one is the best way to go for it's the symptom. So I'm going to uh, cover what is PCOS and what are the symptoms of a PCOS and the, what are the solution for PCOS so you can actually get the benefit and then you are not going to have those problems with the mood swing, depression and the weight gain and all those acne and the losing hair and the oily skin and not only that, having so much hair all over the place, the unwanted place and I will cover one by one. So at the same time, 11.30 uh, Pacific time, March 14th on Tuesday. So I'm looking forward to see you that time. And let me close this one, stop sharing with you. And can you see me? I'm, I'm really sorry beginning that it's internet didn't work properly. I tried to edit this video because some people just missed the whole like 10 minutes before my talking so I restart again so I don't want to miss any information so if you have any question either you comment in the below or you can send me email at info at makeovernutrition.com and I hope to see you next Tuesday have a great week bye